longtime San Francisco resident, Daniel Garland, works in adventure travel and volunteers for Bay, uh, the Bay Area Border Angels, helping with outreach, events, and operations. Danielle, take it away. Blistering heat, desolation, what about fear? Humans do inadvisable things in the face of fear. Things like leaving their homes when confronted with violence and persecution, like entering a fore foreboding desert seeking safety on the other side, like putting themselves and their families at risk. Fear and desperation push, up, push us to trudge ahead into the unknown when this is better than what lies behind. Perishing in the desert wasn't always a risk when crossing into the United States. The U.S.-Mexico border used to be less regulated, and it was common for people to cross the border as part of their daily commute to work in the U.S. If caught, Border Patrol agents would arrest them and take them back to the other side, only to start the process over again the next day. In the mid-1990s, measures were put in place to heavily fortify and militarize the zone between the U.S. and Mexico. This created the border we know today, the Big Bad Capital B Border. The new strategy closed off major urban points of entry, funneling hundreds of thousands of migrants through remote and notoriously inhospitable desert and mountains. The idea behind this approach was prevention through deterrence. These measures intentionally forced people into de perilous, deadly deserts. The lawmakers behind this attempt to curb the tide of people crossing into the US knew full well they were and are putting our fellow humans at great risk by enacting these regulations. It was quickly realized this strategy had a big problem. Aside from being incredibly inhumane, it wasn't working, and it still isn't. Migrants were and are not being deterred, despite the harsh conditions they now have to face. Harsh conditions like extreme heat, temperatures reaching upwards of 125 degrees in the summer, and plummeting to freezing in the winter, not to mention perilous terrain, rattlesnakes, poisonous spiders. Migrants are also at risk of robbery, assault, kidnapping, rape, uh, and, kid and kidnapping by cartels and gangs. The Border Patrol says since the mid-90s, 10,000 people have lost their lives due to extreme conditions and lack of food and water. However, as you might imagine, the Border Patrol doesn't have much interest in tracking these numbers accurately. Researchers have done studies on how long it takes for living things to break down in the desert, in these very deserts. It can be as few as nine days before there's no trace left. So this estimated border patrol count is far from accurate because it doesn't take into account those who don't survive the journey and whose bodies are never recovered. Not to mention there are thousands of backlog missing persons accounts, reports that have never been investigated nor closed. Fear understates what these migrants, our fellow humans, are going through. And we must remember they leave their homes, put themselves and their families at risk, knowing they'll have to face these deadly corridors. Desperation, fear, and hope are driving them forward. <laughs> um, an organization called Border Angels is seeking to mitigate this crisis on the border that has been building for decades. We are a nonprofit, all volunteer group of motivated, committed, compassionate people. The larger organization is based in San Diego and engages in many community programs, including hikes into the desert to place jugs of water and life-saving supplies along migration routes. I volunteer for the Bay Area chapter. Uh, we put on fundraisers, we drive down carloads of supplies to shelters in Tijuana, we participate in water drops, and we work with the Bay Area migrant community in a variety of ways. I joined the Border Angels because I want to help. I hear what's happening on the border and I want to do something despite being hundreds of miles away. Even if it's something small, even just for one person, one family making this treacherous journey. A close friend of mine founded the Bay Area chapter just this past February and already we're seeing the impact we can make. Twice a month, experienced Border Angel volunteers lead groups into the desert. They hike in several miles with as many gallon jugs of water, packs of food, and first aid kits as they can carry. In the winter, they bring warm coats and warm coats and blankets as well. 
The groups also return to remove used jugs and pick up anything left behind. Sometimes they find their water jugs slashed by border patrol agents. Really? As if our fellow humans don't have enough to fear in these deserts? I see this and wonder, what is the border patrol afraid of? My hope is that you're seeing all of this and you're motivated to do something, to act, to speak out. It's easy to feel helpless and hopeless being several hundred miles away. So let's do something. Let's do something together. I discovered that helping doesn't have to be a huge commitment of time or money. Every little bit counts. Volunteer, donate supplies, donate money. Just $10 buys five gallons of water, which will absolutely save lives. Water is literally a matter of life and death, life and death in the desert. Perhaps most importantly, help by starting the conversation many people fear and avoid. Migrants are painted as criminals, drug dealers, murderers. In reality, these people are men, women, and children who need help. They seek security in a country many of us in this room have the privilege to have been born in. So they, let's speak up together. Talk to friends, coworkers, neighbors about the uncomfortable topic of immigration. Discuss prevention through deterrence. Migrants are fleeing persecution, violence, economic instability, and corruption in their home countries. They don't want to leave their homes, but they're coming to the big bad border because they feel there's no other choice. After two and a half decades of prevention through deterrence, the issue on the border has become a full-fledged humanitarian crisis. Regardless of your political leanings, our fellow humans are dying in the desert. We can no longer keep this about politics, nor turn a blind eye. This is a, this is a human rights issue. Our fellow humans are stranded for weeks and months in overcrowded, underserved shelters awaiting asylum hearings. Our fellow humans are being separated from children and family and in, held in inhumane detention centers. Deterrence shouldn't be death when making a desperate, cho making a desperate choice. Uh, there is no deterring people who are at this breaking point, who see refuge and hope on the other side of this perilous desert. So will you speak, speak, act, and stand up with our fellow humans in the face of fear?